are the sea. <laughs> it haunts men's memories. It haunts our legends. It tempts us with its endless frontiers. And it's the site of so much of our finest literature from ancient times on. Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford, and I live in Colorado, so <laughs> here's a reservoir. <laughs> but uh, what I want to talk about a little bit today is the putative goddess of shipwrecks in Norse mythology named Ron, or in modern Icelandic pronunciation, Rau. Ahoy, me mateys, let's keep going with this. Um, you might just sink in Davy Jones's locker out there. All right, I think this is probably like 10 feet deep in places. Um, so that might be a real, a real fear. Um, that's actually a great analogy, I think, to the idea of Ron, the goddess of shipwrecks, is this Davy Jones locker phrase we have in English. Right, so in some stereotypical pirate movie or whatever, the kind of thing that I'm sort of poorly uh, imitating here, um, people talk about going to David Jones's locker. But does anybody believe in David Jones? Right, I don't think there's some traditional belief in somebody named David Jones who puts you in his locker right when you die at sea. It's just a poetic expression for it, right? I think in the same way, it looks like Ron is not so much a goddess that people believe is is there that they have specific stories about myths that involve her, but it's more that she's part of a poetic expression. And part of why I'm saying that is that you don't ever see her mentioned in the narrative poems of the poetic Edda, right? The poems that actually potentially are passed down in oral format for a few hundred years before they're written down in Iceland in the 1200s. But she does come up pretty frequently in sagas and especially in the skaldic poetry quoted there. So skaldic poetry is more complicated poetry, also very likely dates to the Viking Age in many instances, but um, is not intended to tell any sort of story about the gods, but instead is intended to praise someone. Perhaps I'm praising a king, a friend, a woman I've fallen in love with, that sort of thing is what skaldic poetry is for. And there we see mentions of Rowan when we're talking about something that's happened to somebody or might happen to to me. So for example, in Frithjof's saga in Svrakna, uh, once one of the most famous sagas, kind of um, underrated in our century, uh, Frithjofer, for example, says, Nu skal ek rónar renbed tróða. Now I must trod on the real bed of Ron when he's uh, saying he's about to, to die at sea. He doesn't. Um, and then later he says, for example, Nu er vist atil Ronar skalfara. Now it is certain that one must go to Ron, i.e. die at sea. And in a poem, in Ron gatir roskum drangum. And Ron guards, keeps the valiant drangers, right? Dranger being the classic word in Old Norse for a valiant man. Later again in a poem, he says, Sjö skal gul o gestum ever kistingar thurvum that duger rausnar rekum i ronar sal medium. So one shall see uh, gold on guests if we need uh, hospitality. It, uh, the, the, the hospitality, the generosity, the rausen uh, avails men in the middle of Ron's hall. So there they're kind of picturing Ron as like a hostess for men who die at sea. Again though, notice, kind of Davy Jones's locker like, this isn't a story about her, it's just this notion that I'm going to go to her, I'm kind of putting a poetic flourish on it and saying that oh yeah she's gonna you know host me uh, in my death at sea. Um, Egil Skallagrimsson, one of the great Skaldic poets, probably 
I mean, whatever the exact details of his real life, um, probably an actual Viking Age poet is behind these these, these poems in his, his saga, uh, including the famous poem, the Sona Torek, uh, I Mourn My Sons, in which uh, he talks about two sons who have died, one of whom died at sea, and he says about him, Mjok hevir ron, riskt um mek. So ron has shaken me very roughly. Again, because his son died at sea, and so she is, he is by, again, poetic license taken by Ron. Let me give you a quick word from my friends and partners, the scurvy dogs at Grimfrost, and I'll be right back after that. <laughs> So why am I making this point? Part of it is that I think so often we are tempted to see everything anyone says in Old Norse that mentions any kind of putative supernatural being as being about the same level of seriousness, but it probably isn't, right? Just like today, you can have a sincere belief in heaven and hell, but still talk about somebody going to Davy Jones's locker, or still talk about you know haunting someone in the afterlife or something like that, even if you don't literally believe in it. We never see, just like we never see Ron, we never actually see men, you know, dead men in some undersea place administered by her. The two afterlives that actually come up in narrative or that are referred to often enough in other contexts that they are obviously serious beliefs are hell for most people and Valhall popularly anglicized Valhalla for men who die in battle. Now Snorri in the prose Edda, in the part called Skaldskaparmol, which actually is not too often read, but um, which can be just a mine of names, he does talk about um, the sea itself as Ver Ronar, the husband of Ron. Now that's interesting, it's very Again, poetic, flourish sounding, the same way that I might call, uh, you know, in my, my 2023 English Scaldic poem, I might call this, the sea, you know, Davy Jones's bride or something like that, right? But he also goes on, oh, and, and he calls it the land, land Ronar, Ron's land. He later goes on to say, Ron is the name of Agir's wife, and they have nine daughters as written earlier. Now, that is... Uh, interesting in itself because Agir is barely mentioned. He does sometimes come up as the like MC of the gods, a host of their parties. Uh, those nine daughters are poetic names for the waves. So of course Old Norse has lots of poetic names for everything. It's possible there was some kind of narrative about Ron and Agir and their nine daughters as actual personified beings rather than poetic names for the sea and the waves. It's also possible there wasn't and I don't want to invent narratives about this like lots of popular books and websites do. We also have the uh, uh, comment in Skullscopper Mall, then the Asir became aware that Ron had a net in which she fished for all the men who came into the sea. Net thought they were vedi men alla thoerosa kom. So we have kind of a boogeyman-like image of, you know, Presumably, perhaps a, a woman of anti-god, Gilton, troll, kindred, who's got her net that she's catching your husbands and brothers and sons who have died at sea in. But my guess is that in terms of sincere belief, people thought of those men as being in hell, maybe a particularly watery part of it, not in some specially located underwater thing with, with Ron, who doesn't seem to really have a personality beyond this uh, book you boogie woman identity, you know, Davy Jones is like. Well, probably beat that dead horse a little bit too much here. Uh, appropriate for being by horse tooth here. Uh, I hope that uh, you uh, get something out of these videos. I appreciate those of you out there buying my translations and other books to come. And especially those of you who support this channel on Patreon, you really do a lot to make my life. So, 
for now from beautiful Colorado. Wishing you all the best, mateys.